All right, North Texas takes on Texas San Antonio, and that'll be a 7.30 Eastern kickoff on Friday, December 2nd, 2022. Utsa's minus eight and a half, total 67. And if you like the mean green of North Texas to win this one outright, they're plus 255 for some money line cash. I'm 2-0 in my last two college football tier package bets on my website. And I'll include a link for that package in the description section below. Just remember, guys, if you sign up for that package here, you're going to get access to that membership for the next 30 days. And of course, as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They'll be included with your purchase. Now, North Texas has played some pretty terrible defense this season. They're allowing over 30 points a game, and they're in the bottom 10 in the country in total yards allowed. They're facing an Utsa team who's scoring 38 points a game themselves, and they throw for over 305 yards per contest. Now, quarterback Frank Harris, he's ninth in college football with over 3,500 passing yards. Meanwhile, wide receiver Zachary Franklin's also just 44 yards shy of 1,000 for the year. He's got 11 TD grabs on the season. Now, the 10-2 and two Roadrunners haven't lost a game since September 17th. When it comes to the injury report, Smith is questionable. Sharp and Brady are out for Utsa. Meanwhile, for North Texas on the other side, their combination of excellent running backs in uh, Attaway and Adeyi, they're both listed as questionable to play for them. When it comes to the total, North Texas went 70% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, Utsa saw overs against the likes of UTEP, UAB, and Middle Tennessee. I'm going to lean toward Texas San Antonio, minus 8.5, over 67. Next matchup, little Pac-12 action. I'm talking about Utah taking on USC, 8 o'clock Friday night. USC is minus 2.5, total 66 and a hook. And even though USC's favored in this one, they played some pretty shaky defense this year. They're allowing over 405 yards per game. They also have the 110th ranked secondary in the nation. They're facing a Utah offense who scores just about 40 points a game themselves. They're also in the top 20 in total yards per game. Cameron Rising's thrown for 22 touchdowns, and he's been sacked only seven times. When it comes to defensive play, Cole Bishop and R.J. Hubert, they've combined for over 130 tackles. Now, as a defensive unit as a whole, the Utes are currently in the top 20 in the nation in, in um, fewest total yards allowed. And when it comes to the injury report, Utah is relatively healthy at the moment. Meanwhile, for USC, Jackson, Rodriguez, Ote, and Allen are out for them. And when it comes to the total, the Trojans saw their last six straight get over the number. Meanwhile, Utah saw overs against the likes of Colorado, UCLA, and this very USC team, that was actually a 43-42 to victory over the Trojans uh, back on October 15th. I'm going to lean toward Utah plus two and a half over 66 and a hook. <clears throat> Next matchup, it is going to be Kansas State taking on TCU 12 o'clock Saturday. TCU's the three-point favorite, total 62. And as good as the Horn Frogs have been, well, uh, undefeated TCU, they haven't been impregnable on defense. These guys are 74th in the country in total yards allowed. This D is also giving up nearly 150 yards a game on the ground. They're facing one of the better rushing teams in the country in Kansas State. These guys are gaining over 210 yards a game on the ground. And they have a top 20 rushing offense. Now, Deuce Vaughn, he's just five yards shy of 1,300 for the year. He's also gaining nearly five and a half yards of carry. When it comes to defensive play, Felix Anudike Uzuma has seven and a half sacks on the year and a couple of forced fumbles. Now, no real shock here, guys. The Wildcats are allowing only 19 points a game on defense. When it comes to the total, K-State went six and three to the over in their last nine. Meanwhile, TCU went 60% to the over in their last 10. I'm going to lead toward Kansas State, plus three, over 62. Next matchup, Toledo taking on Ohio, 12 o'clock east. The Toledo Rockets are minus two, totals 55. And the reason why Toledo's favorite in this one is the injury to 
Ohio's starting quarterback. And of course, that is Curtis Rourke. He is currently out for the year. And uh, he was actually responsible for making Ohio a top 15 passing offense. Now, uh, they're going to have to go with their backup, and they're facing a Toledo secondary who's actually quite good. The Rockets are allowing only 187 yards a game through the air. And they rank 19th in the country in that particular category. Quinion Mitchell, he's got five interceptions from that secondary. A couple of pick sixes for the corner. Meanwhile, Dallas Gant and Deontay Johnson, they have nearly 200 tackles between the both of them. And when it comes to offensive production, the Rockets are scoring over 33 points a game. When it comes to the total, Toledo saw four out of their last seven get over the line. Meanwhile, Ohio went 60% to the over in their last 10. I'm going to lean toward Toledo, minus two, over 55. Next ball game, little Sunbelt action. I'm talking about Coastal Carolina taking on Troy, 3.30 Eastern start time. Troy's the 10-point favorite, total's 48. And the reason why this line is so high is the absence of Grayson McCall. The Coastal Carolina quarterback is out with a foot injury. When it comes to defensive play, the Shants have one of the worst secondaries in the country. They're actually in the bottom 10 in pass defense. They're facing a Troy team who won their last nine straight themselves. They also have one of the toughest defenses in the country. They're allowing only 16 points a game, and they also have a top 25 rush defense. Carlton Marshall has a team-best 112 tackles. Meanwhile, T.J. Jackson and Richard Jabuner, they have 14 sacks between the both of them. Now, injury-wise, McDonald, Medina, and Barber are out for Troy. Meanwhile, for Coastal, once again, starting quarterback Grayson McCall is sitting this one out with a foot. When it comes to the total, Coastal went 4-3 and three to the under in their last seven. Meanwhile, Troy saw five out of their last seven stay under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Troy, minus 10, under 48. Next contest, Fresno State taking on Boise, 4 o'clock Eastern start time. Boise State's the four-point favorite, totals 53 and a half. And even though Boise's been solid, it's Fresno who's on a seven-game winning streak, and they've played some incredibly tough defense during that span. The Bulldogs currently have a top 25 pass defense, and they're allowing only 20 points a game. Now, David Perales, he's fifth in the country with 10 and a half sacks. Meanwhile, Lavelle Bailey and Malachi Langley, they have over 130 tackles. Now, they're facing a Boise team who's little threat throwing the football. They're 109th in the nation in passing offense. They also failed to cover in two out of their last four ball games. One of those failures was an outright loss to BYU. Now, injury-wise, Wright, Smith, and Cobbs are questionable for Boise. When it comes to the total, Boise saw unders in two out of their last three. Meanwhile, Fresno State saw unders against the likes of Wyoming, San Jose State, and USC. I'm going to lean toward Fresno State plus four, under 53 and a half. Next ball game, it is going to be UCF squaring off against Tulane, four o'clock Eastern kickoff. Tulane's minus three and a half, total's 57. And as good as Tulane's been, these guys did lose to UCF back on November 12th. Uh, the final on that one was 38-31. This Tulane defense also has a tough time slowing down the run. They're giving up 155 yards a game rushing. Now they're facing a UCF team who does nothing but pound the football on the ground, and uh, they do it quite well. The Knights are gaining nearly 250 yards a game rushing, and they're actually in the top 10 in the country in total yards per game. Now, quarterback John Reese Plumley, he's accountable for over 3,000 total yards uh, and 24 total combined touchdowns. Meanwhile, running back Isaiah Bowser has 13 rushing TDs on the ground. Now, when it comes to defensive play in this one, Central Florida is allowing only 21 points per contest. When it comes to the total, UCF saw three out of their last four get over the number. Meanwhile, Tulane went five and one of the over in their last six. I'm going to lean toward UCF, plus three and a half, over 57. <clears throat> Next contest, SEC Championship. I'm talking about LSU taking on Georgia, 4 o'clock Eastern start time. The Georgia Bulldogs are minus 17, totals 50. Now the LSU Tigers blew any type of momentum they had 
coming into this ball game. They lost 38-23 to Texas A&M last week. And uh, I'll tell you what, the Aggies have one of the worst offenses in the SEC. The Tigers also have failed to cover against the likes of Arkansas, Auburn, and Tennessee. And that Tennessee game was a 40-13 outright loss. Now they're facing an undefeated Georgia program who probably doesn't really even need to win the game to get into the playoff. But they've been playing so well lately, really uh, tough to see them doing anything wrong here. They're leading the nation in rush defense and fewest points allowed. Malachi Starks and uh, Jamin Dumas Johnson, they have nearly 120 tackles combined. When it comes to offensive production, the Bulldogs are averaging over 38 points a game. And they're in the top 10 in total yards. Now when it comes to the number, Georgia went 60% to the under in their last 10. Meanwhile, LSU is going to have a tough time moving the football themselves. They also saw unders against the likes of Arkansas, Tennessee, and Auburn. I'm going to lean toward Georgia, minus 17, under 50. Next matchup, Clemson, UNC, 8 o'clock east. The Clemson Tigers are minus 8, total 63. Now, the Tigers haven't been a great covering team this year. They failed to cover in three out of their last five. And that includes outright losses to Notre Dame and South Carolina. Now, the Tigers also killed any type of momentum or chance of getting into the college football playoff. They went into last week's contest with South Carolina with just one loss in the year, uh, the ACC championship ahead of them, and the uh, possibility of other highly ranked teams losing, which actually happened. So uh, they got the help they needed. All they had to do was take care of business, and they didn't. Now, offensively, Clemson, uh, Clemson really, they haven't been a huge threat throwing the football. They're 86th in passing offense. When it comes to defensive play, as good as they've been, they've had several issues with their secondary. Now, they're facing a North Carolina team who throws for over 320 yards a game themselves. And they're led by Drake May, who's fourth in the country in passing yards. Drake's thrown for over 3,800 yards this year. He ranks fourth uh, with 35 touchdown passes. And that's fourth in the nation. Meanwhile, wide receivers Josh Downs and Antoine Green, they've combined for nearly 1,700 yards receiving between the both of them. Now, when it comes to the total, UNC saw overs against NC State, Pitt, and Duke. Meanwhile, Clemson went 70% to the over in their last 10. I'm going to lean toward North Carolina, plus 8, over 63. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. It is going to be Purdue taking on Michigan, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Michigan's minus 16, totals 51 and a half. And not only do the Wolverines dominate teams, they do a nice job of covering the point spread too. They're 6-2 and two against the spread in their last eight. And they're in the top three and fewest yards allowed. Mike Morris has seven sacks on the season and 21 tackles. Meanwhile, Junior Colson leads the charge with 80 tackles on his own. Now, when it comes to offensive production, not many people are running it better than Michigan. Along with scoring 40 points a game, running back Blake Corum, he's rushed for over 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. Now, they're facing a Purdue squad who failed to cover in six out of their last 10. Failures to cover against the likes of Northwestern, Iowa, and Wisconsin. As a matter of fact, guys, those failures to cover against Iowa and Wisconsin, those were outright losses. When it comes to offensive production, the Boilermakers have done little to establish a run game. They're 97th in the country in rushing yards per game. Now, total-wise, three out of Purdue's last four did stay under the number. Meanwhile, Michigan went 6-3 and three to the under in their last nine. I'm going to lean toward Michigan, minus 16, under 51 and a half. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap. I like Texas San Antonio, minus 8.5, over 67. Utah, plus 2.5, over 66 and a hook. I'm 2-0 on my last two college football tier package bets on my website. And just remember, guys, if you sign up for my college football tier package bets, you're going to get access to that package for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all my cheaper personal bets, absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. Give me Kansas State, plus three, over 62. Toledo, minus two, over 55. 
Troy minus 10, under 48. Fresno State plus four, under 53 and a half. UCF plus three and a half, over 57. Georgia minus 17, under 50. North Carolina plus eight, over 63. And with my next and final free pick, I'm going to lean toward Michigan, minus 16, under 51 and a half.